This was an incredibly well-written script, everything from the beginning to the end. Um, it is about six episodes in total that you're going to watch of Crime and Justice. And I remember reading each of the scenes and how much attention to detail there was, the cohesiveness of the story, and more importantly, how real it was to where we are from in Lagos. Like, I was born and raised in Lagos, and I'm sure I've almost, unfortunately, every member of this audience has experienced crime or witnessed it secondhand at some stage. We've heard all the stories, so is combat, strange but true, you know, and I thought that this project so accurately highlights some of the crimes um, that we have heard, some that were quite famous over the years as well. Um, so we've drawn from very real experiences, very real places um, to tell this story. And I also, yeah, so when I, when I read the script and I saw that, that was the first thing. And the first thing I said, and anyone who, who, who knows, and, and shout out to our former commissioning editor, but I was aware, right from the show, I was like, I'm doing it. I don't, I don't care what's happening, I'm doing it. <laughs> Whatever, I'll do it. How does this stand out from everything that you have seen so far? Yeah, so, so this particular project I really feel stands out because of, of the the way that we approach the stories and the very human interest angle. I mean, just watching this in the story of Mr. and Mrs. Oredo and yeah. and going through the thought process of how people find themselves in somewhat criminal situations and dodgy situations. You don't necessarily intend it right from the beginning, but sometimes you can end up there. So um, to me, I, I think that's part of what helps the story stand out. Jamal, do you have other thoughts? No, you said it perfectly. Okay, fantastic. So Jamal, do you share any similarities with the character you played? He's human, I'm human. <laughs> um, yeah, that's um, one thing I think. Um, thanks again to props to our directors. They were amazing. Thanks, props to um, Owen and Mac. Both directors actually brought out the best in us. Um, we're vessels, literally. Like I say, um, these actresses, we have to just give them our bodies for that moment in time. And um, I share a lot of similarities with Dan Lady, like a lot. Um, calculative, um, takes a minute before he makes his decisions. Um, there's a whole lot. He's human. And, um, I mean, if you see them as a character, then they're not humans, but they're actually just like us. For me, thinking about it, I actually, funny enough, I really don't... <clears throat> What's the word now? I think I actually think uh, more about uh, members of our police force, basically operatives and officers in the Nigerian police force. I believe crime and justice gives them something to aspire to. Yes, there are officers who are actually really dedicated to the job and trying to make our society safer. But then we all know how Nigeria is. And um, for those who aren't there yet, I believe crime and justice gives them something to aspire to. Casey and um, Dan Ladi. Are just amazing and so they should watch them so and me. try to do better so you say i have an experience i don't know if anyone here has experienced any special units that is close to what you guys are channeling here but i mean during the course of preparing for this show did you get to interact or you know pretty much go into the space and understand how it's done um, I think without getting too caught up in, in, the, in the details of what somebody's job is, um, what we spent a lot of time is that we did interact with a number of police officers and we had people that we called to consult on certain things and appearances. And I wish Williams was here. He would tell you a very personal story about that, how it affected his look mm -hmm. for the show. Um, but I think more than that, it was about getting into the mindset of these people. Okay. Nigeria is a tough place. Mm -hmm. It's a very tough place for police officers, for policemen and women. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you've been privileged enough to meet some of the fine, upstanding men and women of the police force, those who are very helpful, those who are very dedicated. It can often feel like they're fighting this uphill battle. Mm -hmm. It can feel like they're putting everything on the line every day, including their lives. And people don't really know, but they are there. I actually had an uncle who was also in the Nigerian police force. Um, and he was also in a special unit that was eventually disbanded. And, you know, hearing his stories and listening to him talk, it makes you have hope. And that's a very big part of what this project is. We should be hopeful for what we can be, not just in the entertainment space and how we continue to tell stories, because what Yinka and the team at Cold Waters and everyone who was involved in this project, what they've managed to pull off with this, I think is so humbling. And, and crime and justice will always have a special place in my heart for that. But also the reality of our day to day, we can be more and we are more. And if we see it often enough, we say it often enough and we keep acting like we are, eventually we will become just that. Fantastic. Really amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, so Jamal, what was the most challenging part for you? She has to get, go on like a strict diet, more exercise routines, more pull-ups, more push-ups. What was that? <laughs> 
No? Um, I didn't want to walk the full of I didn't like her, so I was like, no, nah, I'm not going to walk with her. That was full yeah. Okay, that's joke. Um, for um, the most challenging part, I think, was literally not having a life for, you know, for um, three months plus good performance. I think we like, had like this four Sundays free where, um, yeah, we literally were living as Danladi Diko and Kilechi and Simi. So we were these other people for that moment in time. Like, family was, I, I don't know how to explain it. I kind of locked out and zoned out of it, everything. And um, if you're looking for me, I have to come to set. Absolutely. Yeah that's, really? that's, yeah, that's how it is. Like, yeah. you have to find me on set. And so did you have multiple locations? Or, or? Oh, yeah, yeah, a okay, whole lot. Course, so. I, mean, I mean, you can see, you can see mm-hmm. from the show. Um, uh, by the way, honestly, guys, I have never seen anything like this on TV. Um, I hope you guys enjoy yeah, this. I, I, I still have um, goosebumps from yeah. seeing... Just watching this. This is the first time I'm also seeing this, by the way. Yes. Yes. First time I'm actually watching this. And, um, wow. <laughs> Yinka, is, sadly, is not here, but. So there's something about Yinka that uh, I have to say. He's a perfectionist. He'll push you, and you're going to be like, ah, oh, why am I taking so much time shooting this thing? But that's, that's it. Guys, and put yeah. your hands together for that's Yinka and what? Amazing, really amazing. Thank you so much. So on the lighter note, now this is for you, Maggie. Now you have to be honest, okay? Have you at any point in time had any run-ins with law enforcement officers? And what did you do? Share your experience. Thankfully, no. Well, I'm, very, I'm a very last hiding student. I was a student. I'm very, I'm, very <laughs> citizen. I'm very I'm very cool. No. Last man no, police no, FRSC no. That's F- Folu has. I already know. Yeah, she can't tell. Yeah. Folu. Yeah, <laughs> I've, I've had. Oh, yeah, I've had what a was the experience like? Which time? <laughs> with, with which arm? Of our anyone, friend. anyone, share any experience. Um, okay, well, I'll share, I'll share one that happened actually while we were shooting crime and justice. Um, some some shoot days, as, as any um, professionals in, in, in the room, you guys know that it can be very long. You can shoot till crazy hours in the morning. And I remember thinking, you know, as I was driving home, and, and, and a lot of the time I tend to drive myself. Um, late hours, or whatever. Maybe one a.m., two a.m. We wrapped one day, and going home, and I saw the in, you know, one roadblock and the back and front. So I had wait, 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 pause. Did you flash your SSC? So that they will shoot me on this spot, madam. Please respect me. <laughs> Safety first. <laughs> on that set, no guns or badges were carried anywhere outside of set. Please, I don't want problem. Okay. No. Right. Okay, um, and I did have a police officer stop me. In fact, I was quite worried because I wasn't sure at first if it was a police officer because he wasn't in front. He was to a side road. And I thought, hi, don't be. They have found me today. <laughs> and he does this very menacing, casual stroll. Now stood by my window. We didn't even say wind down in our lights. Nobody told me I found the lights. I walked down. Good morning, officer. I'd agree to you. So I greet you too. Let me greet you better. Okay, yeah. sorry, sir. Hold on, sir. And asked me what I was doing, and I said, you know, I've just finished working. I'm going home. He said you looked tired. I said yes, and I only have a few hours to sleep, and I have to go back to set. And then he said, take it easy. You can't cheat your body. Be going. So I promise amazing. you, a real story, and I just that's such an amazing. Story. Th- Listen, and you know, and and I know that it's very. A lot of us were very quick to want to react negatively mm-hmm. sometimes when law enforcement approaches you because you assume the worst at mm-hmm. all times. Please never forget that, however tough a day you are having, yeah. that officer has probably had a tougher day. Mm-hmm. I promise you. Yeah. Please never forget that when that man has to go home, he probably has to take off his uniform. He has to be careful how he moves. Please never forget that. And if we just approach our law enforcement officers with a bit more empathy, with a bit more understanding, understanding. like it makes life a lot easier. I'm not saying you don't have a problem, <laughs> but maybe the problem will be far from coming. That's all. I like so, yeah. that. Thank you so much. I don't know why I am of the opinion or I have the impression that Jamal might have a different story or experience to share. You know how it is we always think that, you know, guys have a tougher experience than we women or we women know how to get away with law enforcement agencies. Yeah. So um, for me, I'm from the north, right? I always go with peace first. But um, again, the same thing. Odd hours. Um, this this production, we normally finish in odd hours. Yeah, there's like 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m., and then we're up by 6 a.m. But um, I always meet them. I try to avoid where they are, because sadly, for guys, it's sort of different. Um, they approach you with a little bit more um, hard love. 
<laughs> um, but well then said. one thing I, I try to always do is definitely yeah. with Fulu said I, I, I go with I turn on my light because mm-hmm. and a gun just takes one bullet um, I turn on my light and I greet them and then the conversation starts it depends on how they react and I react as well but um, I always think about the fact that you know I have one life and uh, I have a family to report to really? so yeah it's, it's um, I mean it, yeah they're humans too. Yeah. But also being this character, we, we also got to realize that more. Um, they put a lot into their work. And they, they stay on the last one for God knows how long. I know. Yeah. Because listen, you guys are still going to see later episodes. Let me tell you that if you talk to Kelechi somehow, yeah, it's like a slap you can't collect. Are you serious? Nah, I, I understand. Did you see that scene with um, with uh, Tony Aquata? Where he said, what, what do you say? Don't you know how to do your jobs? I, I said, know. what? I know. A whole, no. A whole SSC, you are you joking? Like, Who are you? All these people in me was like, I slap you. Civilians. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, so, so you see how this, um, um, this show is going to be episode ended and it's like the story is closed what does this mean i mean what can, what can we look forward to in the next episode you can look forward to um more things that happen in lagos more really? crimes more, more people oh, more wow. stories oh, wow. and this is the exciting thing about crime and justice which is why it took so much for each episode to be made each episode is its own complete story okay. as much as the stories of the characters follow through each episode is its own complete story, so you can honestly join from anywhere, but you, you want to go back to the beginning because you want to know their story, and each episode reveals a little bit more about the core SSEU team. They're the special elite team, so you have Dela Didiko, you have Kirichi Farasi, you have um, Simi. <laughs> Simi as well. Mm-hmm. Um, in there, you have our, our head boss in charge, who's not here, mm-hmm. Ogabi Boye, and their lives are fascinating. And I think that's what you will enjoy the most about it. It's not about police officers, it's about, it's about lives. Mm-hmm. And it's about how humans interact in Lagos. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, and I was going to ask you, I mean, sitting behind that wheelchair and just wheeling off, did you wish at some point that you had got some of the action, maybe to slap somebody's face or something? Or you're just fine pressing those computers? Boop, boop, boop. So here's the thing about Simi <coughs> and Maggie. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, Maggie. Oh, so that means you channel the same energy. Well, well, some there's, 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 there's an intersection basically okay. between character okay. and actor. Okay. Uh, but here's the thing with Simi. Um, in preparing for Simi, I had conversations with um, someone who is actually physically disabled. Um, and I got to speak with her about several things and you know just understand her thought process and how she feels about being in a wheelchair and all that um and i realized that a good number of physically disabled individuals are more balanced than yes mentally emotionally than we in quotes able-bodied um people um so for simi yes at certain points she might have felt like she'll not to get some action and all that, but then she also recognized her own strength, her own strengths, which is her, her intellect, basically, Fantastic. her spirits. Okay. Um, if you notice, she's you'll see this in more episodes. Oh, she's kind of like the bubbly one, sunshine. She okay. brings like the ray of light to the to the room and all that. So she recognizes her own strengths and she's securing that, basically. Fantastic, ladies and gentlemen, kindly give a warm standing ovation to the cast of Crime and Justice, please. Uh, can I also ask? We have quite a few of our cast yes. members right here in the okay. audience. Guys, may please come down. Team Crime and Justice, yeah. come through. Team Crime and Justice, yeah, you come can have a stretch through. with Sam. Sam, let me stroll down. Veno, I see you just walked in. Come through. Veno just showed up right now. It's a lovely girl running up and down. Thank the you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There you so go. Much. Come through. Come guys through. Come through, so guys. Good. Listen, everybody in here put in so much into this project. Group picture, so every can we have crew, crew, everybody from from these co-workers and the building. Oh, guys, Bobby. I know they don't know yet. Oh, come down, Shams and Co. Come. What do you mean? We all work so hard on this project. So everyone, just please take a moment to be recognized and really take a look at these faces now because as they show up in different episodes, it's possible that he was stabbed while he slept, or he actually knew his killer. Mrs. Arido, we're sorry to inform you, but your husband was found dead this morning. What were you doing at the hotel? I was scared. Hold on. That's the cover for this morning. Is that the murder weapon? So what do we know about these so-called senior cult members? That apparently they're everywhere. I'm talking about the judiciary, business, politics, even the police. 